I'm Woody Huffines. I own the Nerds to Go in McKinney and Frisco, Texas, and this is tech for the untechnical. And what's this Windows end of life thing, and why are all the technical nerdy people spun up about it? So, Windows end of life, Windows 7 end of life is the 14th of January of 2020. That's next month, effectively 34 days from today. And what does that mean, and why is that a big deal in the press? Well, it's a big deal because when the Windows it goes to end of life on one of their operating systems, they cease to update that operating system, which means that you won't get updates to the operating system to keep it current with the security vulnerabilities, etc. So you won't get the patches. Patches are updates to the Windows software, or to the Windows operating system, and all the ancillary files that go with it. The automatic patching uh, process that Windows uses started in 2003. They updated it in 2006, 2007 to Patch Tuesday, which means the second Tuesday of the month, they push out all the patches to fix the software. And when I say fix the software, I mean, over the previous month, or sometimes several months in advance, security researchers or Microsoft themselves will find Windows vulnerabilities, things in the software that would allow a bad person to put malware in your computer, take your computer over, have an escalation of privileges, steal data, uh, manage, m run, uh, take over your computer. And each month there's a Windows update, and it's the, on the Patch Tuesday. Sometimes there are as many as 97 patches where Windows pushes out 97 fixes to the software. Not all of them are security patches, but in the main they are. Now, the reason that they went to an automatic update process is before they had the automatic update process, a lot of users were not sophisticated enough to keep track of the patches that they needed to make. So especially end users that were consumers weren't updating their software. They didn't know they needed to update their software, and they weren't updating their software. There were vulnerabilities that were staying in the software, and even though patches for those vulnerabilities were out, they weren't getting patched. You may not remember, there, was a, there were worms, uh, NIMDA, worm, there were a bunch of viruses that came out about that time that caused significant issues on the internet generally. And it didn't just affect the Windows users, it affected the entire internet in some cases because those things would propagate. And as uh, over time, we've become a more monocultural internet. Now in the United States, most of the machines are Windows. There are some that are Linux and there are some that are Mac OS, more Mac OS than Linux certainly. So there's a bigger target or attack surface, if you will, on the Windows side. So those people who didn't know that they needed to patch their computers were causing people who kept their computers patched because the people who weren't patching their computers were having their computers taken over by botnets and generating email attacks and generating uh, denial of service attacks because they weren't updating their computers. So the first thing that Microsoft wanted to do was have an automatic process that would update Windows machines so that the people who weren't sophisticated enough to know that they needed to do it, it would do that for them automatically. And then the second group of people that they were concerned about were the enterprise user, someone who had multiple copies of Windows. Um, you know, in, in a desktop environment for a Fortune 500 company, even, even where I used to work, we had 20,000 desktops. We had 20,000 computers that we had to update. And if you have to do it one at a time, as opposed to having an automatic process, that's very time consuming for your IT department to go around and update this computer and the next one and the next one and the next one. So an update process on a patch Tuesday, push those patches out to all the machines on the network and allowed the IT department to manage the process because if you had uh, uh, proprietary software, maybe a patch would break that and so you could test the patch before you went out with it and then it would go out. And they picked Tuesday because it gives you Monday to have a clean day of operations and then Tuesday's the patch and then you have the rest of the week to fix if you have breaks in the patch system, which has been happening a lot in Windows 10 lately. But that was the reason that they picked Tuesday. So Patch Tuesday came out to fix those vulnerabilities in Windows automatically through a patching process. So 
We've got Windows, Windows operating system, which is a big and complex operating system that has security vulnerabilities in it that people can leverage to take over your computer or do bad things with your computer. So Patch Tuesday was instituted so that those patches and those updates happened automatically. Now why is this a big deal? This is a big deal because of what it's called Exploit Wednesday. When an operating system gets patched, Windows will send out some code to go in and fix a problem in the computer. Well, it's really easy for the bad guys to re-engineer or back-engineer that patch code and look to see what was fixed. And since they can see what was fixed, that gives them a clue as to what was wrong so that they can write things to attack what was wrong for the people who don't update their computers which is why it's important to keep your computer updated because those vulnerabilities after they get patched are then known to the bad guys about how to use that vulnerability against you. So, complex operating system has security flaws in it. Those security flaws get patched. That patch is an automated process to keep you up to date to protect you from bad actors on the internet from using the vulnerabilities in your operating system against you. That's why the Windows 7 end of life is very important because the end of life means that Microsoft will no longer be patching security vulnerabilities in Windows 7. That's right. As of the 14th of January, 2020, 34 days from today when I'm recording this, if you have a vulnerability in your computer, Windows, Microsoft is not going to come back and patch it, which leaves you vulnerable to the bad guys and the things that the bad guys might want to do to your computer through a phishing scam or a, or a malformed web page or a, a malformed attachment to get you to click on it and then cause that to run against a vulnerability in your computer. So we know what the patching patching's for and we know why we do it automatically and we know what it patches. Why is this a big deal with the technical people and the nerds like myself? Well, the latest numbers I've seen is 53 and something, 53 point something percentage of machines that are Windows machines out there are Windows 10, which means 46% of the machines are Windows 7 or 8, which means 46% of the machines that are out there that are running Windows are going to lose support on the 14th of January. And when they lose that support, they are going to be vulnerable to attack. And anything that's found that's a vulnerability will not be fixed automatically by Microsoft. It won't be fixed at all by Microsoft. Microsoft is not going to be putting out patches. If you have a Windows 7 machine, it is very, very important that between now and the 14th of January, you update it to Windows 10. We've all done it. Well, I've done it. You need your license plate's about to expire. And well, you got to go get your car inspected and you go take it and you stand in line and get your tag thing and it's a pain and really you think, what's the risk? I haven't been stopped for speeding in forever and they don't pull people over for expired tags. And if they do and I get a ticket, I can then go get my tag and get out of the ticket. And so do I really need to do it right now? We might want to do the same thing with this Windows update. But... If your Windows machine is not patched and a significant security vulnerability is found, the risk that you're running is not like getting stopped with an expired tag. It's like getting stopped with 100 pounds of cocaine in your trunk because your life is going to be significantly different, especially if you have a small business and you're running Windows 7 to run your small business. So how do you update to Windows 10? We'll talk about that later. I'm Woody Huffines. I own the Nerds to Go in McKinney and Frisco, Texas. If this information is helpful to you, hit the subscribe button below, ring the notification bell, and when these come out, you'll be able to hear what I have to say about how you update your machine. Thanks for joining us.